Does it feel like time is just standing still? Welcome to Bald Guy DIY, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can replace a clock movement very easily so that you can get time ticking by once again. In today's world of digital clocks, it's sometimes uncommon for us to find clock faces that still have a big hand, a little hand, and a second hand moving around to signify the passage of time. But you may have clocks that are part of your home decor or give an antique look, and those typically always have hands, or of course something like a grandfather clock or something like that, where it depends upon the movement of the clock in order to make those hands go around and tell the accurate time. What I found in my own experience is that a lot of those movements don't last very long, so even if you paid a fair amount for the original clock or you made it yourself, you might have to replace it down the road. Now, if you've never taken one apart before, it might seem a little daunting, but I'm gonna show you how simple it is to replace the movement with a brand new one and get the hands set and everything in order so that it's working properly and everything's calibrated correctly. They say time waits for no bald guy, so let's get started. I have this vintage style clock that the movement no longer works on and needs replacement. It's stuck at a few minutes past two. I purchased a movement kit from Amazon and I put the link in the description. It comes with the main movement mechanism, a bag of hardware and related things needed to change it out, and also a bag of hands and accessories so that you can match any style of clock that you're looking for. To remove the existing hardware, you simply need to pry the hands off the shoulder that they're sitting on. Each hand has a different surface that it's resting upon, and so you just need to pry it from that surface. You sometimes can wiggle it by hand, but you also may need to use a screwdriver or other pry bar just to give it a little bit of encouragement right at the place where it connects to the shoulder. I thought it was going to slide off the second hand pin, and so I thought it would slip right over, but as you can see, it doesn't. And so I needed to use some pliers just to pull that pin out. Just pull straight up on that pin and you can see as I lay it beside the clock that it just pulls off and pops back on later. Next I'm just going to work off the two different hands, the minute hand and the hour hand, and I'm left with the bare post which is secured by a lock nut. You want to be careful when you use pliers here that you're not going to score up the face of the clock. So it's important to make sure that the jaws of your pliers are either protected or that you're setting them a little bit away from the surface so they won't dig in. Perhaps you could put in some kind of cover if you did damage it slightly, like a vinyl circle or maybe even 3D printed piece, but it's better just to avoid the damage in the first place. I remove very cleanly here, and as you can see as I turn it over, there's the movement mechanism recessed inside the back of the clock. Now if your mechanism wasn't recessed, you may need to hold it as you remove that nut from the other side just to prevent it from sliding around and working against your motion. As you can see as I pry it up there, it comes out clean. That's the old mechanism ready to be removed. You can see here that the battery compartment was damaged. I don't think that's what prevented it from working, but the new one is whole and intact, and that's always an improvement. Before I insert it, let me just show you the hardware pack that it comes with, including the rubber washer that I'm going to put on here just to give it some cushion and uh, help it to mount more securely. And you can see here that you get a washer, a lock nut, you get a rubber gasket, and you get this mounting bracket. So if you were going to hang your clock directly on the wall, you would just slip it over the post, although the other way around, and then you'd be able to use that mounting hardware just to hang it up and put your whole clock into a screw or nail that's fastened in the wall. In this case, it's freestanding, so we don't need to do that. So I'm just going to put that rubber washer or gasket in place and stick it through the hole in the back of the clock until it's flush on the back and protruding on the other side, the front face of the clock. You can see the old washer in the background. I'm not missing any parts. That's the one that came off the original mechanism. And now I'm going to put this washer over it and once again, put the lock nut in place. Now I did use the same brand of movement as it was originally, it was quartz branded. And so that means that all of the hardware is the same size. But if you're using different branded parts than what was there originally, you might not find that they all match perfectly. And so it's important to make sure you use the right hardware with the right mechanism. So I tighten it up here again. I'm not trying to put too much pressure on it. I just want it to be solid so it's not sliding around when it's done and the rubber gasket on the back is going to help it seat nicely without putting too much pressure on those plastic parts. Once that's done I start with the hour hand just like I finished with it when I was in the disassembly and I just want to push close to the edges of that plastic shoulder so that all of the pressure is right where it should be. These arms are very thin and flexible metal so if you push too far away you're going to bend the arms 
if that's the case, as you can see here, you can just bend it back a little bit until it's flat. Now with the minute hand, it's the same thing. You're just gonna put the pressure right near the post and it's gonna slide down on the outer shoulder so that the hour hand and the minute hand are attached to different parts of the mechanism because of course they turn at different rates. With both of those seated in place, you can now put either the finishing pin on or you can find a second hand to put on there. The original clock, of course, didn't come with a second hand and so it just had a pin or a cap on top of it. But I'm gonna look through the hardware of the hands that I got and see if I can find a nice second hand to go with it as well. Regardless of whether or not you use the second hand, it's going to still turn inside the mechanism. And so it really doesn't matter one way or the other, it's just up to you. I did use the original hands that came with the clock and I didn't use any of the ones in the kit. Again, if you were using a different brand, they might not fit that way. And so there was a particular style in the kit that I was going to use if the original hands didn't fit, but in this case, they worked fine and I didn't have to worry about that. As you can see, there's various different styles of hands there, something more modern, something more elegant or classy, something a little more rustic or traditional, and a nice bright red second hand that you might wanna use on maybe a less classy looking clock. As I set those aside, the movement replacement is complete and these extra pins are just there, as I said, if you weren't gonna use a second hand. Now that it's done, all I need to do is put the battery in and the movement will start working properly. It is pretty obvious which way the battery goes, but there is a diagram in case you are confused. It does fit better one way than the other. So as I juggle it a little bit here, you can see uh, clipping it into place and then using the spring tension to hold it in there. As I lift it up, I'm gonna use the thumb wheel and just simply move the time to somewhat close to the current time. You might notice as I do this that the position of the hour and minute hands isn't exactly what you'd expect. Normally, as you approach the top of the hour or the 12 with the minute hand, you're going to see the hour hand come on directly to the number of the hour, but that's not the case right now. They're a little out of sync. That's what we need to do some final adjustments for because if we continue it this way, it's always gonna look a little funny. Thankfully, it's very easy to do this. Each of those hands is really just a friction fit on the plastic shoulder that they're connected to. And so all we need to do is put a little pressure to overcome that friction fit and we'll be able to move the hands to whatever position we like. The relationship between them is what matters, not the precise time that you're using. So when you have the hour hand pointed directly at an hour, you'd like the minute hand to be pointing directly at 12. And then as it as the minute hand moves around the clock, completing the hour, it will move the hour hand into the correct position. So when the minute hand is pointing down towards the six, the hour hand should then be pointing somewhere between those two numbers and so on. Just be gentle, remembering again that these are very thin metal hands, and so you just wanna make sure that whatever pressure you're putting on, you're not bending or twisting the hands, but you're just holding right near where they connect on the post and spinning them around. Now that the hands are correctly positioned and calibrated for their relationship to one another, it's just time for some final adjustments and making sure that the hands are pointing straight and nice and clean. After that, the second hand will continue to tick around. It'll continue to progress just like you would expect. And with just a few minutes work, time ticks on and the project is complete. So there you have it. The project has come full circle and it's now ready to be put back into action. Or if you're following along at home in your own project, it's ready to go into action for the first time. These movements are so versatile because they can be used in many different environments, as long as you're able to drill through from a backing and attach the hands properly. I've used them in shadow boxes or in other applications where I've used vinyl for the numbers and then the movement in order to pass the time. You could make the numbers out of just about anything in any font, use wood or plastic or anything else and come up with something really amazing and they all use this same simple movement. Let me know in the comments what kind of clock project you've made and how it turned out. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up so I know it's something that resonated with the crowd and send me an email if you'd like. My information is in the description below. Until next time, don't let time pass your projects by and don't be afraid to be balder.